a top 15, maybe a top 10 team, one of the better teams in the country, despite some of their losses, but they're good. Both, both losses weren't bad. Josh Ojanwuna getting his first career start at Baylor. He'll jump center. He'll control the tip, and this game is underway. Baylor in Mississippi Valley State. Fifth meeting all time between these two. Baylor has a 4-0 advantage lead in the series. Entry pass to Ojanwuna is knocked away and stolen. So the Bears turn it over on their first possession of the night. And that's one area Baylor I think needs to get a little better. When it comes to their turnovers, they have to value the basketball and take better care of it. Three ball left corner in and out for Raquan Brown, the leading scorer for the Delta Devils. Here, nearly had a uh, three-pointer to start the game. Here are Baylor's starters. Jade Nunn, Jacoby Walter, Ray J, Dennis, Jalen Bridges, and Josh Ojanwuna. Ojanwuna continues the uh, J theme with the starting lineup for these Bears. Jade Nunn, a three, knocks it down for the first points of the night. Bears coming off a two-game road trip. King mentioned the uh, losses to Michigan State and to Duke. Here's the starters for the Delta Devils. Raquan, Raquan Brown, Donovan Sanders, Danny Washington, Walter Hamilton, and Areco Gibson. Five starters for Coach Gray, uh, George Ivory and Mississippi Valley State. Team that comes in 0-11 on the night. So far this season, Jacoby Walter, a three, is off the mark. The rebound by Walter Hamilton. Jay Nunn, good start. He was 0 for 5 in the loss to Duke at Madison Square Garden on Wednesday. So him hitting his first shot tonight's great start. Pass. Errant pass stolen away by Ray J. Dennis. Three left corner in and out. No good by Jacoby Walter. Out of bounds and will stay with the Bears. And you talk about Jay Nunn. A guy who I think can really provide more than what he provided in the last two games. He's such a talent. Extremely quick off the bounce. Can really shoot the ball like we just saw. I mean, I think that he struggled in a Duke game, but moving forward, he has to put that behind him, and he has to be better than that because his Baylor team clearly needed him, especially towards the end of the game when they needed a bucket. Inbounds to Walter, and he knocks down the triple from the right corner. Jacoby Walter, I think the coach is urging him, King, more and more to look for his shot, to try to create. And he's not shy about taking it. Yeah, but that's the thing that you love about him is the fact that he, he's very unselfish. He's a very selfless team-first type of basketball player. And uh, when he plays his game, it's not really forced. Everything just comes to him, and it comes naturally, and it comes easy to him, which is why a lot of people deem him as a pro. Danny Washington penetrates, kicks into the corner. Three ball is no good. Areco Gibson normally wears number two. He's wearing number 23 tonight. Bears in a hurry up the floor. Don't get a shot away. Mississippi Valley State glad to take it the other way. And then they lose the handle. Delta Devils basketball. They'll inbound on their baseline, trailing 6-0 to start the game. King, how many times when you were here have you heard Coach Drew say you can have a Christmas or oh, you can Merry have a Christmas. Merry Christmas? <laughs> That's <laughs> too, right. Too many times, J-Mo. Yeah. Every but, year around Christmas time. Yeah, but fortunately, <laughs> we've always had Merry Christmas. That's yeah, good. It, it's never been a, uh, just a Christmas. <laughs> his uh, rationale behind that is Jake Nunn. It's his second three here in the first half. His rationale is you win that last game before you go on a Christmas break. And the Bears are trying to do that tonight against Mississippi Valley State. And they're off to a great 9-0 lead to start the game. Three-pointer by Washington. No good. Jacoby Walter, the rebound for the Bears. Yeah, but you better not have too good of a Christmas because, look, <laughs> as soon as you owe wow. Jaden Nunn again, wow. getting hot, sparking up. But as soon as you come back from Christmas break, J-Mo, oh, just prepared to be prepared to be on that line. Got a runner. There's some banners that are hanging in the... Farrell Center, one on the strength of a great home record. A lot of yeah. good memories here in the Farrell Center. I mean, you have been here way longer than I've been here, J-Mo. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll take that. Because <laughs> you were doing games when I was playing. Yeah, that's true. Chidi Ume is off the bench. There's still that inbounds pass and knocked down another three-pointer. Wow, the Bears off to a great start beyond the arc. They are five of seven. 
Every shot they've taken is a three-pointer. They've hit five of their first seven there. This down low, Bears break it out. Walter, another three. This one is no good. Skips off the heel of the back iron. Well, this is the response that you want. I mean, after two losses, you come in here, you, you can sometimes play to the level of your competition knowing that you just came off of a, a, a bad skid on the road. So I, I like the response I'm seeing from Baylor, being locked in, being dialed in, being focused, and not allowing those two losses to affect how they came back out here and played. Ernest Minton working against Josh Ojanwuna. Ojanwuna holds his ground, and that is a traveling call and a turnover by Mississippi Valley State. Josh Ojanwuna, his first start in a game. So there's a come out firing and hitting. Every shot has been a three-pointer. They've hit five of their eight threes. Jaden Nunn has hit a couple of those. I'm sorry, three of those. Jaden Nunn with three, Jacoby Walter with two. And tries to feed it down low to Bridges. Knocked out of bounds. Langston Love on the floor. Coming out of the timeout. Jo Jonathan Chumwa Chachua on the floor for Baylor as well. So look at Ernest Minton. And Chachua. Senior for the Bears. On the floor early. Eve Misi has been starting at that post position. Misi, uh, we're told, uh, would be available in an emergency. But otherwise, we'll get a rest this evening. Yeah, he played well. Oh, he played great. Yeah, he played he? really well. I think he really solidified himself uh, on the draft boards across America in that last game. I mean, all eyeballs, Madison Square Garden. For him to go out there and compete the way he did on the offensive glass, even the defensive glass, and to protect the rim the way he did, man, he woke some people up for sure. Going against Kyle Filipowski. Oh. Player a lot of people think maybe the national player of the year. There's a miss on that dunk. Delta Devils still looking for their first points of the night, five minutes in. 15-0, Baylor on top. Chachua working hard on defense, pass. Sales out of bounds, turnover, Mississippi Valley State. Turnover number five by the Delta Devils. Miro Little is on the floor for Baylor. Dan Twan Grimes. Takes the inbounds pass. Langston Love and Caleb Lohner also off the Baylor bench. Here's an alley oh. up to Lohner for the flush. Oh. So there's a couple of guys that, uh, you know, we've seen that dunk on an alley oop. In fact, really early in games to Eve Meese. Here's one from Dantuan Grimes to Caleb Lohner. Drove in, looked for the dunk, and Chidi Ome missed it. Bears take the rebound. Rhymes to Love. Corner to Miro Little, and he is fouled. Look at this dunk right here from Caleb Lohner. First off, this is a good pass, and he puts it right where it needs to be. Not too high, but right there in the sweet spot. And Caleb Lohner. Just making it look easy, j -Mo. <laughs> Exactly. Beautiful play. That was the first bucket tonight that wasn't a three. Now Langston Love goes back out behind the arc and knocks down the triple. Man, 20 to zero. This is starting to get out of hand, Ooh, j -Mo. Man, 20 to uh, nothing. I, I've seen a lot of basketball. I don't know if I've ever seen a college game start 20 to zero. I would agree with you. We're six minutes in. Mississippi Valley State has not scored. Leaner in the paint. Shot is no good, but a foul. It's on Miro Little, and the Delta Devils will have a chance, a couple of them, to get their first points of the night at the free throw line. Raquan Brown goes to the line. He's their leading scorer on the year, 15.8 points a game. Scoring has been an issue for the Delta Devils. They are averaging just 48.8 points per game. You go by the Ken Palm stats, they are last in the nation in offensive efficiency. Wow. Out of, how many, 350, 351, 353 schools? You know, I really don't know because they keep adding, I feel like they, they <laughs> add new Division One schools every year. I know at one point it was like 361, okay. but I think it's a little bit more now because they keep adding Division One schools every single year. So I have no idea how many Division One schools there yeah. are. But to be last is crazy. <laughs> exactly. 
One of two free throws there for the first point of the night for Mississippi Valley State. It's 20 to 1, Bears. Chachua thought he was going to fire a three there. He drives in, but loses his footing and travels with it. Turnover, Baylor. And that's the one where Chachua probably should have kicked, went to go set a ball screen. You know, one-on-one -on -one right there in that situation from the three-point line. Not is where he, not, not where he's at his strongest. Oh man! The backcourt pressure by Baylor. They get the steal, and Dantuan Grimes is fouled by Reco Gibson. He'll have a couple of free throws. So, what's the mindset, King, of the Baylor team coming into this game? You know, you know, Mississippi Valley State's overmatched. Yeah, it's typically well, after the losses that you had, it's redeeming yourself. I mean, two losses in a row, whenever you're on a back-to-back -back losing streak, it's not the greatest of feelings. I mean, especially when you lose in a fashion that you did. Uh, when the, you know, you're in Madison Square Garden, you're in big arenas, and this is a great take right here, good, good steal on the trap. But when you're in big arenas like that, and you come away with an L, and everybody is watching, and it's prime time, I mean, it's not a great feeling uh, losing in, those, in that type of caliber of a game, but... It's all about redeeming yourself, you know, getting back focused because it's not the end of your season. Yes, you had, you lost two games, not the end of your season. But conference play is coming. So all the small things that you have to be able to correct, you have to correct them now. And with Christmas break coming, you have to be able to be locked in as soon as you get back because now you're playing the, the, the Texases, the Kansases, the Kansas State. And every single night, it's a battle. Yeah, and the start of conference play really not that far away. It's not. Well, Baylor, it comes up on January 6th. Their conference opener will be on the road at Oklahoma State in Stillwater. Well, Oklahoma State's not great this year, so they got lucky on the first first <laughs> loss. But it's still, if, it, if it's packed, it's hard to play in. Baylor is a good team, so when good teams come to Oklahoma State, when they go to Stillwater, they typically it gets a little bit loud because of the way that the venue is shaped, which is going to be similar to... The That's new right. arena for Baylor. That's exactly right. That's the goal in the new Foster Pavilion. Baylor's first game there will actually be a non-conference game against Cornell on January wow. 2nd. Chachua with the block. Great explosion by Jonathan. Pass up the floor and out of bounds. Last touch by Dan Tuan Grimes. Boy, that was nice to see by Jonathan. Yeah, and you can tell in moments where he's slowly starting to get it back. It's not the same as it once was, but this is a moment where you can say, hey, that kind of looks like old Tra Jonathan Trauma or Trachua right there. Love to see that. Get some early minutes here tonight against Mississippi Valley State. Inbounds to Grimes. He'll put the ball in the hands of Miro Little. To Langston Love in the corner. Head fake. Won't shoot. Pass out. Stolen away. Drive and dunk at the other end by Raquan Brown. Too long of a pass right there. Make the simple play. Cross-court pass when they're in the zone and the lanes are clogged. Not good. First field goal tonight by Mississippi Valley State. The 12 and a half minute mark in the first half. Bears come right back and Langston Love. It's his second three this evening. You know, and that's what makes it so hard when you play against this Baylor team and you try to zone them. They have so many shooters that can knock it down consistently from behind the arc. So it's really hard, unless you're extremely active in your zone, to limit their shot attempts. It's a 24-3 lead for the Bears. Brown drives, pulls up, hits it. He's been their offense tonight. Ray Grant, Ray, Raekwon Brown, another jumper, makes it 24-5. Back-to-back -back buckets by the senior from Atlanta, Raquan Brown. He has all five of their points. Chachua, jumper in the paint is good. Nice, smooth-looking mid-range jumper. And he's worked a lot on that. He, after the injury, he, he's gotten better from the perimeter, from the mid-range area. His jumper has looked a lot more cleaner and smoother, and, and you can tell he's a lot more confident in it. Echo Gibson on the far side. Puts the ball in the hands of Chidi Ume. Ume from Texas, a senior from Highland, Texas. Jumper to beat the shot clock. No good. Not a bad shot. Antoine Grimes the rebound. Grimes behind the screen of Chachua. Drives in, and that will be a blocking foul on Mississippi Valley State. It's 
so good to see, you know, history and you know, everybody come back and to see, like, the brotherhood. You know, everybody talks about, like, the Duke brotherhood or this school brotherhood. Well, I think Baylor has one, and it's a special one. Nice. And I hate when they talk about the Duke brotherhood. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we understand. There's a, there's a lot of you guys out there. Cool. Uh -huh. But I want to be on that same level, you know? I think Baylor is in that uh, in a class of their own is what yeah, I would say. There Baylor. we go. Yeah. There we go. Inbounds and a foul on that inbound steal attempt. It was on Menton. And for Ernest Menton, that may be three. No, just two. Two fouls here in the first half. Bears inbound, put the ball back in play, leading 26 to 5. Speaking of Duke, Bears coming off that game against Duke at Madison Square Garden. Tremendous learning experience for this Baylor team. Neutral site game, technically, but there was, no, was nothing neutral about it. Joshua John Wuna from the low post banks it in for two. Yeah, neither one of those games were technically neutral site games. Both of those games were pretty much road games. Michigan State in Detroit. Not a neutral crowd for sure. Travel. Traveling call, that's another turnover. That is seven turnovers in the first half by Mississippi Valley State. Bears can't play that game. They've got to keep control of the, the ball themselves. They've got five turnovers in the first half. Coach George Ivory looks on for Mississippi Valley State. Looking for their first win of the season. Ray J. Dennis back on the floor. Dennis, second in the Big 12 in assists, 12th in the nation. Six and a half assists per game. Bridges for three. No good, just off the front iron. Delta Devils bring it up. You know, uh, King, you and I both noticed this before the game. This is a really good crowd here tonight. Somewhat yeah. of an innocuous game, you know, three days before Christmas. Mississippi Valley State, but I think a lot of people want to be here for the the final yeah. men's game in the Farrell Center no, This is a, a tremendous crowd Typically in a game like this like you just said if it's not the end of the Farrell, I mean we might see two three thousand people in <laughs> right, here Right, right students are gone and the, stu and, and, and the students are gone right right so this is a great crowd Right and, in by Danny Washington, and this is how I hope every single game at Foster looks like I think that when you only fit, what, about 7,000? 7, 75. Yeah, 7,500. I mean, I feel like every game in Foster should look like this. That's the goal. There's a steal by Ray J. Dennis. Pass ahead to Jacoby Walter. Step back three. He's knocked down another triple. His third made triple in the first half. A 31-5 lead for the Bears. And that's the goal. That's the reason for setting it up for a, a crowd of 7,500 is to have a home court advantage, best advantage you can have every night. Nunn and open three. He's hit another one. Jaden Nunn, his fourth made three-pointer in the first half. Bears are lighting it up from three-point range. And Basket in the history of the Farrell Center. Wow. First game against San Diego State, November 29th, 1988. And that man, Julius Denton, hit the first Baylor basket, or the first basket here. Uh, had 18 points in that game. Bears came up short against San Diego State. But how about that? Now, 35 and a half years later, Julius is here working this game tonight. Wow. Would have never known. How about that? You learn something new every day with J-Mo. <laughs> Julius Deadeye Denton. Deadeye is a... Is Dead a is, Denton. That is a really great name. <laughs> Julius Deadeye Denton. That's, right. that's, an, that's an elite name. Mississippi Valley stay with the ball. Coming out of the timeout. Down low. Shot up. No good by Reginald Reynolds. Joshua Johnwoon has the rebound. Jacoby Walter. Another three for the Bears. His fourth here in the first half. How about the three-point shooting exhibition by the Bears to start this game? Well, they're one of the best three-point shooting teams, if not the best, in America. And they're showing why. You leave them open, they make you pay. They are second in the nation in three-point percentage coming into this game. 42.3% from beyond the arc. Near steal. 
jumper and a foul is going to be called on Ray J. Dennis. That'll put a Reco Gibson to the free throw line. Gang, you played here. You played some big games, had some big wins here. Yeah. What stands out to you? Ooh, man. You can think about it if you'd like. We got a, we got a lot of time to talk about that tonight. I feel like with this game, we got a lot to talk about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I'll give you my top three. All right. But let, let, let me think on that real quick. Okay. Because okay. I, I think I know number one. Okay. Actually, no. Yeah, no, I got, I, got, I got top two. I got to figure out the third one. Though. All right. Good, good. Gibson hits the free throw. His first point of the night. First player other than... Uh, other than uh, Raquan Brown to score a point in this game. Donovan Sanders back on. Got it, J-Mo. Got my, got, got my top three. All right, very good. Kings top three games in the Farrell <laughs> Center coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Two free throws. 37-7 is the Baylor lead. Ray J. Dennis gives the ball to Jalen Bridges. Screen from Ojan Wuna. Oh, oh. Wow. How about that move? Wow. Oh, you got to hit it. Man. You got to finish that one off. Broke him down. Ball out of bounds. Going to stay with the Bears. Look at this right here. Off of the jab, you have to finish this move. But nonetheless, they say a 99-cent move with a one-cent finish. <laughs> He's going to get another chance, I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. Jaden Nunn drives down the paint. Ball become, becomes wedged between the rim and the backboard. Jump ball. They go to the uh, alternate possession, and the ball goes over to Mississippi Valley State. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen that on a layup. On a layup, yeah. That's yeah right. I've seen that on a plenty of jumpers right but never on a layup backcourt pressure again by the bears oreco gibson breaks it himself pass to the perimeter watch this one jacoby walter nice easy flush after the steal for another two thought he was gonna wind up and give you a quincy ac <laughs> jam he, he doesn't have that in him he doesn't have, no, not too many people, J-Mo, have, that, have that QAC <laughs> type, type, type of bouncing, you know, authority in which he dunks it with. That's one of the memorable games here, a 10-dunk game by Quincy AC against Texas. And I remember I was a kid watching that and seeing those teams, like seeing guys like Tweedy, seeing QAC, you know, I was like, wow, I think I, I, think I want to do this. I think I want to play at Baylor and just come into my first practice in the practice facility. And I remember they, they did a drill where uh, it would be a big in the middle of the paint, and it would be two bigs on the outside. Coach Tang was actually orchestrating the drill. He was throwing to one, and they had to try to dunk on each other off of, like, a, a, a drop step. And I was uh, amazed wow. at the level of athleticism because that, at that time we had a, a young Corey Jefferson, Quincy AC, uh, Isaiah Austin. Uh, what's the lefty's name? Uh, the lefty, really athletic, about 6'10", played on the wing. Yeah, Aunt Jones. Aunt, Aunt Jones. Yeah, yeah. Aunt Jones. I'm talking about we had elite-level athleticism Wow. at Baylor in this drill. And that's when I kind of, honestly, I was like, you know what, I want to do this. But then again, seeing this level of athleticism, I don't know if I really want to do this anymore. <laughs> because it was playing against guys like this, like Jacoby. Nice, smooth little dunk on the... Steal by Jacoby Walter. Line change for Scott Drew and the Bears. Miro Little, Dantuan Grimes, Langston Love, Caleb Lohner, Jonathan Chumwachachua back on the floor. Miro Little, top of the key for the Bears. Freshman from Finland. Bounces to Grimes. Little working against his defender into the paint. Head fake. Stripped of the ball. Loner keeps it in bounds. Two to shoot. He lost the handle. Bears didn't get a shot away. For the Delta Devils, Chidi Ume brings it up. 
Three-pointer left side, shot no good. Ume the rebound and the putback. 41-9 is the score. Baylor on top, 4-15 on the clock, first half. Wow, Langston Ooh. Love slashes in for the reverse layup. Tough finish right there. And a 43-9 lead for the Bears. Biggest lead of the half for the Bears. Getting inside and open is Reginald Reynolds for the banker. Reynolds, a grad student, 6'5", 220, from Sparta, Georgia. Gets Mississippi Valley State in double-figure scoring, 43-11. Chacho with a rebound, timeout on the floor. Bears lead big early. Yeah, tough finish right here. Barrel Center. Man, so much great history. All right, you said you've got your top three identified. What would yep. be your top three games here at the Ferrell Center? Okay, number three okay. would be my junior year beating Kansas here. Beating Kansas at home. My junior year, phenomenal moment in the Ferrell, okay? Number two would probably be my first bucket against Stephen F. Austin. <laughs> In, his, in the first game, I had, I think I want to say 14, 13, 14 points. Nice. When I really didn't even know if I was going to be able to play basketball again. Yeah. And to be able to score 13, 14 my, uh, my first game, that's number two for me. Number one, when we beat Oklahoma State my sophomore year to hit number one. Because everybody knew that we were, I think we were number two or three. No, we were number two at the time. And the number one team just lost. Huh. So if we won the game, we'd be number one team in the country. Oh. oh. And we ended up winning that game. I think it was the record crowd. The energy was crazy. And, yeah, we became number one team in the country on Sunday. But how we got smacked on Monday by West Virginia? Oh, okay. At West Virginia. But it's okay, though. It happens. Uh, and then, was, they, then they rushed the court on us, J-Mo, which is, which is wild. Because West they Virginia? Were, yeah. yeah they, were, they were top 15 in the country with Javon Carter, and they rushed the court on us. Yeah. All right, those are three good ones. Those are really good ones. You've got great perspective as a former player here. Jumper on the baseline. We saw earlier a three-pointer by Reginald Reynolds. First three of the night by the Delta Devils. Makes it 48-14. Chachua three just misses. Rebound by Raquan Brown. Again, the former players that are here, they had a reunion uh, dinner last night uh, came over to the Farrell Center. Luncheon today. They're here. They'll be recognized at halftime. It'll be fun to see you guys out on the court together. Somebody suggested suggested we should have a a pickup game at halftime with you guys, the former player. <laughs> Man, I don't, I don't know how many guys could actually still play. Look, I'm always bad. At it. I'll get my shoes out the car right now. But I, I don't know how many of the former guys are actually in... Uh, good enough shape but I, you know i actually played with uh you know scott sexton oh yeah scott sexton i played with him this morning I actually, you really i played with him on tuesdays and fridays and for a guy who i want to say he's about 53 54 my man is in incredible shape wow he, he is in incredible shape but today as a play he had a triple handoff and i tried to fight around it and i actually <laughs> knocked him over and i felt so bad jmo i did not know if he was going to be able to recover because i'm not a small guy right but he got back up like a champion and continued to play and i mean at 54 i'm like hey i'm hope I, I hope i'm able to compete with guys who are in their 20s and 30s when i'm 54 and be able to actually make a difference jmo he's not just out there he's out there actually contributing to winning so shout out to scott sexton there you go he's man. somewhere here I don't know where he is, but shout out to my man Sexton. 48-15 is our score. Minute 22 to go in the first half. Oh, oh. Nice assist to Caleb Lohner for the big jam. Oh. He cocked it all the way back. Caleb Lohner's had a couple of big thundering dunks here in the first half. Well, he's really athletic. He, he's sneaky athletic, and he, I feel like a lot of people don't give him credit for that. He really is, and he shows it on plays like that. 
Another three attempt by Reynolds, and he's hit his second three in the first half. It's 50 to 18. Mississippi Valley State has hit four of their last five shots from the floor. Drive by Grimes, shot won't fall. Mississippi Valley State player uh, had his shoe knocked off. Now he joins the crowd. <laughs> kind of <laughs> late to join the fray, and he's wide open, and he gets the lay-in. Raquan Brown. Still doesn't have his shoe on completely. And he ran all the way up down the court with half a shoe on. That's impressive. I think they gave that basket to Baylor and should have given it to Mississippi Valley State. Antoine Grimes, clock winding down. Lost the handle. Three at the buzzer is no good. And we reach halftime here in the Farrell Center. Final game, men's basketball game in the history of the fair. So on film, where they can improve, and it would not be a great film session, despite winning by 40. All right, that's the goal in the second 20 minutes. Bears lead by 30 at the intermission. Bears have the ball to begin the second half. Jade Nunn puts the ball in the hands of Ray J. Dennis, and we are underway. Second 20 minutes of the final game for men's basketball in the Farrell Center. Three by Jacoby Walter. He misfires on this one. He was four of seven from three-point range in the first half. Baylor's leading score at 14 points a game, right on his average. Baylor with six players in double-figure scoring coming into this game tonight. Walter again on the left wing. Gives it away to Ray J. Dennis. Nice drive up and in. He's just so skilled and so smooth. I mean, right there, the left hand inside scoop off of two. Such there's, a high-level finish. There's a steal on the inbounds by Jade Nunn, and he is fouled. So Bears another takeaway. You know, Ray J. Dennis just, just glides, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, he's, he's going full speed, but it doesn't look like he's rushed at all. And all of yeah. a sudden, he's laying it in. <laughs> He plays at such a smooth pace, and he changes gears at a really elite level, which is what makes him extremely hard to guard. Jalen Bridges for three, and he knocks it down. First made three tonight by Jalen Bridges, his first points this evening. Gives the Bears their biggest lead of the night at 55-20. Darius Clark gets the ball away. Puts it in the hands of Areco Gibson. Gibson drives, layup, no good. Loose ball tipped around. Mississippi Valley State keeps it there half of the floor. Raquan Brown. Brown had seven. Reynolds had nine in the first half. Two leading scores for the Delta Devils. Josh or John Wuna holding his ground. Didn't reach. And a miss on the layup. Jay Nunn to Bridges. Another three. Just misses on this one. Jacoby Walter, the offensive rebound. There's Ray J. Dennis. Let's his defender fly by and knocks down the uncontested three. Just so smooth off the catch. Knew where his defender was. Let him fly by, but didn't try to go in. Knew that he had enough space to be able to shoot the three right there. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Ray J. Dennis is so smooth. Lead grows to 58 to 20 for the Bears over Mississippi Valley State. Chidi Ume, top of the key. Puts the ball in the hands of Gibson. And Gibson, nice drive and bucket. Two more for Gibson. Jumper right corner, that's good, and that's another three by Jacoby Walter. Uh, Jacoby Walter is the move without the basketball, relocating when Ray J. Dennis spun back to go baseline, hit the drift. That's just a high-level play right there by Jacoby Walters to know where to be on the court. Baylor is 14 of 23 on three-pointers tonight. 
right there. Knowing where the defender is, good pump fake to get him up to fly by. And then on this spin back, Jacoby Walters moves without the basketball, loses his defender. Anytime your man goes baseline, your teammate goes baseline, you have to get to the corner to get to the drift to be able to save him. 61-22, the Bears on top. Work the ball low, and Areco Gibson has the bucket. Staying active down there. Taking it at the Bears. 61-24, our score. Josh O'Johnwuna lost the handle. It's turnover number six by Baylor. Drive, no good. O'Johnwuna, the rebound, sitting on his backside. And he is tied up, and the possession arrow favors the Delta Devils. Press 20 on the shot clock, Mississippi Valley State inbounding on their baseline. Watch out. Is that five or did he get the timeout? Uh, he did not get the timeout, so a turnover couldn't get it in in the allotted five seconds. Walter drops it in to Ray J. Dennis. Dennis across the midcourt strike, gives to Jalen Bridges. There's a lob for Ochanwuna. Under the basket a little too far. Tries to pass it out of there. Nearly stolen by Darius Clark, but he stepped on the out-of-bounds line. There's Clark, the sophomore from Indianola, Mississippi. They played this team uh, in their season opener a year ago. And won that game 117-53. At 117 points, the highest or the second highest uh, for Baylor in the history of the Farrell Center. Oh, John Wuna. Timeout on the floor. Four minutes, two seconds into the second half. Baylor leads, been ever held in this game. Wow. Yeah, that's history right there. It's going back, it was. I mean, I, I love that jacket. As a guy who's really big in the fashion, I love that jacket. Like a, a good vintage Baylor jacket right there. Yeah. If anybody knows of one or has one, I would definitely <laughs> buy that, 100%. <laughs> I went to the Ronald Reagan Museum this summer. I didn't see that jacket on display, so <laughs> I don't know if it got back home with him or not. Basket by Mississippi Valley State out of the timeout. Makes it 61-26. Bears with the big lead. Clark with the bucket. It's a great documentary that Baylor Plus has uh, released, released earlier this week about the Farrell Center. Check that out. Uh, subscribe to Baylor Plus. You get a free seven-day trial, trial if you're not already subscribing to it. Told the story on that documentary about they had a sort of a big oversized commemorative ticket to the Ronald Reagan event. Yeah. I had two of those. My wife and I were both here. And a guy I worked with at a TV station in Waco, John Reed, later worked for President Reagan. I said, hey, if I send you that, uh, could you get him to sign it? And he said, yeah, sure, send it. So I did and waited and waited and waited. <laughs> Thought he had lost it. And eventually he uh, sent me a package back. He did lose the ticket, but he got Ronald Reagan's signature <laughs> on it, like a notepad, says from the office of Ronald Reagan. So. That is uh, framed in my office with the ticket. How, how did he lose the ticket? I don't know. You, he, got, you got to do better than he, that. He probably, how many of those do you think he gets? Hey, could you get President Reagan to sign this? That's probably a lot. Yeah. Pro probably a lot. But a ticket is just so special. Yeah. And you had a personal connection with the man. I know. I, and John's a Baylor guy. Yeah, you know, and he's a Baylor guy. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. has to come through. Us Baylor Bears have to st have to look out for each other. John, we're not dogging on you. you no, we're you not. We're not. We're not. We're not. Yeah, yeah. He got. He got. He got something done, which is more than a lot of people could get done. <laughs> so shout out to John right there. Exactly. At Ronald Reagan Museum, by the way, in California. Yeah. Oh, you got to go. It is yeah. spectacular. What part of California is it? In? Um, I want to say, I want to say Simi Valley, but I'm not 100 percent sure. My son and I went there this summer, just north of Los Angeles. Jamal, you got a son? Yes, MJ. Really? Yes. 
Baylor grad. I never knew this. Yep. I thought you only had the daughter. And I thought Ty was like your son-in-law. I mean, I know he's your son-in-law. He is. But I thought Ty was like the only boy in your family. Okay. Uh, outside of Truett. All right, two daughters. And, and, uh, yeah. I got two daughters and one son. I didn't know this. So I got two son-in-laws and a son. I didn't know this. Ty is my son-in-law. He's on the Baylor bench over there keeping Luke Simons in in check. <laughs> So that's another thing about the Farrell Center. I, I, all three of my kids are Baylor grads. Their graduation was here at the Farrell Center. You know, so, we, t we talk about basketball. Wow. There have been a ton of other events in this building. So will the graduation still be here? I think so. I think they need this room. They need yeah, the space yeah. for graduations. Antoine grinds for three, and he knocks it down. That is the 15th made three tonight by the Bears. First time they've made 15 triples in a game since November 11th of 2022 against Norfolk State. School record, by the way, is 20 made threes in a game. Baylor is 15 of 24 right now. Sanders the bucket for Mississippi Valley State. It is 67 to 30. Kobe Walter dribbles back and forth on the perimeter. Now goes to work, drives in, and banks Ooh. it in. You know, something we typically don't see from him, like a one-on-one -on -one isolation move where he has to change directions. We don't see that too often from him, but he's capable of doing it, and he just showed it right there. Working against Oreco Gibson, got the bucket, puts Baylor up 69-30. to 30. Again, Baylor won this game last year, 117 to 53, was the second highest scoring game for men's basketball in the history of the Farrell Center. Highest scoring game was 118 by Baylor against Savannah State, November 17th of 2017. I was here. You were here. And you know what? I remember that game because Savannah State shot more threes than any team in America that year. Oh, wow. So. In the scout, I'll never forget this. I think Coach Brooks had this scout. So Coach Brooks was basically telling the scout team, as soon as, soon as you cross the three-point line, do things like this. Just shoot the three. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're guarded. It doesn't, like, they shoot within the first 10 seconds of the shot clock because I guess that year Savannah State thought that would give them the best chance to win if they have more possessions. So the reason why they, the score was so high was because the possessions, we had more possessions than we would typically have because they would shoot the ball within the first 10 seconds. Wow. Regardless if it was hot or not. It was just that strategy, <laughs> like just get across the half-court line and just fire it up. So I remember that game. How about that? How many points did you add to that 118 total? I don't even know if I had a good game that game. Really? I don't remember. I know I probably played a lot because my sophomore year, my minutes were up and down. You would have gotten in a bunch, But, right? yeah, in, in a blowout game, though, I think I probably played, and that was early on in the year. I didn't start starting until, like, later on my sophomore year. So, yeah, early on, I probably I probably got a solid 15 to 20 because it was a blowout. Don't know how many points I had, though. <laughs> it's Reginald Reynolds with the bucket. He's 3 of 3 from three-point range. Great assist. Chachua with the bucket for the Bears. Just a great pass right there. Threading the needle creating a lane when there really isn't one right there. Jacoby Walters really doing it all tonight. Makes it 74 to 35. Bears on top. That assist the 20th of the night by Baylor. 20 assists on 28 made baskets. Langston Love the takeaway for the Bears. Keeps Jalen Bridges in the corner. Nice pass to Walter. Oh, Whoa, wow. head oh, fake. Wow. Man, head fake and then up and around and has a chance at a three-point play. Oh, wow. Jacoby Walters. You see those guys out on the court. I bet you will see them again as ball boys. What do you think? A hundred percent. One hundred percent. I mean, and both of the guys can hoop. I've seen yes. Brody hoop a little bit, but you were telling me about Truett. 
Truett is, right. is doing well. You said he had 16 out of 22 points? So the team he's on, he's seven years old. It's a six and seven-year-old team. Yeah. And so he's on the high end this year. Yeah. In the last game, he scored 16 of his tw team's 22 points, and they won the game. Wow. So he's Listen, doing well. He had to learn that from you because he didn't learn that yeah, from right. Ty. From Ty. No, he, it's he, all he from Ty. He, no, he didn't learn that from Ty. <laughs> <laughs> I can promise you it's not for me either. <laughs> it's more from Ty. But he has grown up around it and loves it, loves coming to the, the gym. They call it the gym. So that's another thing. I mean, they come, they love coming here. And, yeah. and now they're going to have to get used to coming to a new place. Yeah, you know, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's what I'm trying to get my daughter to love. Love coming to the gym. Right. She just doesn't love it yet, J-Mo. But she's five, though. So, like, two to seven. So she has two more years to maybe love it. There you go. I think it's coming. I hope so. Being around you, I think it's coming. <laughs> hey, I, I hope she'll watch all my games, but she's like, no, Daddy, I don't want to hoop. Basketball is a boy sport. <laughs> like, no girls play basketball, too, baby. It's in love with the bucket. Puts Baylor up 79-37. A lot of folks out of the area would normally be here in the Farrell Center. That includes the, uh, the first family of Baylor University. Brad Livingstone texts me, and he and President Livingstone and Shelba, uh, Shelby, and uh, and their mom uh, are tuned in in Perkins, Oklahoma tonight. There's Ty on the sidelines. We're giving everybody and his family some airtime, so we got to give Ty <laughs> some airtime too, right? Ty's the director of video operations and much more on Coach Drew's staff. How much fun you think that is for me to, to do the games and know that Ty's over there and Megan's involved and yeah, the kids I, love coming here. That's great. I just love it. Oh, we appreciate the Livingstones uh, tuned in. Oh, nice pass. Chachua has eight on the night. That's a season high for Jonathan Chumwa Chachua. And Brad Livingstone says he uh, gently corrects me. It's the Ronald Reagan Library, not the museum. It is in Simi <laughs> Valley, and he does say it is fantastic. A full-size Air Force One jet is wow. in the library. Caleb Lohner, another bucket for the Bears. Up 83-39. Baylor's hit their last nine shots from the floor. A full jet? Yeah. It's, wow. one, of, it's one of the old Air Force Ones taken out of service. Um, but you can, uh, you can walk through it. Really cool to see. Full size inside the library. That's incredible. And a great view from up there. Turn around, shot no good. Caleb Lohner clears the boards. Next game for the Bears will be in the Foster Pavilion January 2nd against Cornell. Langston Love, strong move to the bucket, driving in on the left baseline. 85-39, the Baylor advantage. And against the defense of Jaden Nunn, who holds his ground. Missed shot, Loner the rebound. Love cocked for a three, instead drives in on the baseline right. And he thought about it, thought about ducking it for a quick second, then realized he was a, probably a little too tired <laughs> to get up there. That was the smile on his face, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bears getting a lot of guys, a lot of minutes tonight, which is really good. Jaden Nunn ahead to Miro Little, and a three by the freshman Miro Little. Time out to switch out on the floor. Bears at 90 points here in the ballgame. Langston Love. For Bears, such a great man, such a great broadcaster, representative for Baylor. His banner hangs right next to the Immortal 10 banner in the Farrell Center as well. So great to always remember and honor Frank Fallon, who is uh, who is just the best there ever was. Man, coming from a guy who I think is the best there ever was. Uh, so wow, Frank's the one. I mean, Frank that that says a lot. Appreciate that, but Frank is the guy. <laughs> 
with back to play. There's up 90 to 39 on Mississippi Valley State. We've got under eight minutes to play. Three-pointer in the corner is good by Danny Washington. And we talked about the highest scoring game in Baylor history. I mean, 90 points to go with seven minutes. The Baylor, the Bears have a chance to be able to make the highest scoring game. What, 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 how would that be? <laughs> in the last game? In the last game ever. That would be memorable. Very much so. There's one three-pointer away from tying the Baylor record for most threes in a game. The break for Christmas. 11 days till their next game, January 2nd. And the Bears sitting at 90 points. They had 50 in the first half. Led by a cool 30 at halftime, 90 to 20 at halftime. Jaden Nunn shooting free throws. They're sitting at 17 made threes tonight. The Farrell Center record, the Baylor Farrell Center record, is 18 made threes in a game. The school record is 20 made threes in a game. Came against TCU in Fort Worth in 1995. That was a game where David Hamilton hit, uh, hit nine threes for the Bears. Mississippi Valley State with possession of the ball. Into the paint, turn around, jump hook. Shot won't fall there for Corian Walden. And John Wuna, top of the key. Puts it in the hands of Ray J. Dennis. Saves it inbounds to John Wuna, but then knocked away by Raquan Brown. Jordan Johnson is on, grad student, guard from Memphis, Tennessee. Now the Brown. Caught in the double team trap. Passes out of there. Seven to shoot. Marion Walden with the ball. Two to shoot. Puts it up and hit the shot. Wow. That's draining the clock there. Yeah, it drained it to the very lowest that it could go in. That's a nice shot. One second to go. Very tough. Nice run going for the Bears. They've hit their last 12 shots from the field. Kobe Walter. Head fake. Shot no good, but a foul. He'll go to the line for two. You know, he's really good when he gets to his spot when he drives. He's very patient in that spot, which means he will pump fake. He will get you up in the air, jump right into you. But he's extremely patient when he gets to that spot. Walter leading scorer for the Bears, 24 points tonight. 9 of 14 from the floor. He's got four rebounds and five assists to go along with it. Freshman very, from Very McKinney. productive night. Said this earlier, the coaches really push him to look for his shot. 28 is his season high and his career high for the freshman. And against Auburn in the season opener. Remember that debut. Scott Drew and his staff, it will be a Merry Christmas. John Jacobs, Alvin Brooks the third, Jared Nunes, Bill Peterson, Jason Smith. Great staff, Tweedy Carter back on the staff. Tweedy was the guy that uh, really organized the reunion of the former Baylor players around this game. It's great to have Tweedy back. Yeah, no, he means so much to this program, but also to these players. They kind of look at, it, look at him as a big brother. I mean, seeing what he's done on the court, how good he was. I mean, like I said, he was one of the first guys who actually you know, made me want to start playing. Seeing that backcourt with... Him, Lace Darius, Dunn. I and mean, I remember those days. I was about, what, eight, nine, ten? And just watching college basketball, watching these guys be able to fill it up from all across the arc. And, you know, those two guys and the guy A.C. Law from Dallas. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, those guys right there are probably the biggest reasons where I wanted to play basketball at a high level because you know, I really looked up to them and honestly wanted to beat them. Wow, nice tip out on the offensive rebound. Dennis spots 
Josh O'Johnwuna who dunks it home. Well, that was a talented backcourt, wasn't it? With those Man. guys you mentioned. And Curtis Gerald's too. Yeah. Yeah, they have some guys. Henry Dugat. Aaron Bruce. Bridges with the steal. I had to nod who's gonna dunk it. Jay Nunn with the dunk gets the Bears to 97 points on the night. Four minutes to go, 97-44. Baylor on top of Mississippi Valley State. Five subs at the scores table to check in. Drive, kick back out to Walden. Walden gives to Cameron Mahon. Mahon with a travel, lost his footing. Josh O. John Wuna throwing it. They have a big man named Ali Khalifa. If you've never seen him play, he's like the great value version of Jokic. I'm talking about he's probably the best passing big man in all of college basketball. BYU 10 and 1 on the season, hosting Bellarmine tonight in Provo. So there's the upcoming schedule for the Bears. Start of Big 12 play is right around the corner. Jonathan Chumwa Chachua wheels in the paint. Shot just short. Working hard to get that shot off. Chachua has got eight points. No, I'm sorry, seven points this evening. Seven points and three rebounds. Drive layup is good by Donovan Sanders. Ninety-seven forty-six Baylor under three minutes to play. Everyone has contributed for the Bears tonight. Got off to a twenty to nothing start to this game tonight. Loner drives in, lost the handle, got it back and put it in. He hit his thumb on the rim when he dunked that one in. Yeah, J Mo, they're not getting the record. Threes? No. No, I'm talking about uh, points. Oh, points? Yeah, they're yeah. not getting that. Right. So 118, Barrel Center scoring record. Antoine Grimes gives to Chachua. Kind of working their offense right now. Chachua, the jump hook for two. He's got nine points this evening. They get ten for Chachua. Five of eight shooting from the floor. And you love to see it. I mean, a guy that's overcome so much, you love to see him have nights like this where he can score. He can really get back to, you know, who we once saw he was. He was and... Now Austin Sachs come into the ball game. How aggressive do you think he's going to be, J Mo? Uh, he's going to get a shot up, right? I'm saying at least three. Oh, three? No, I'm saying two. I'm taking two. He's, not, right. he's, he's not the type of guy. Two. He's, he's getting at least, at least two shots up. Minute forty, because his teammates will look for yeah, him yeah, also yeah. to get him a shot. Sachs has been in a couple of games already this year. Hit uh, hit a couple of three pointers, one each in those games. Miro Little for three. There's another one. Ooh. That is now 18 made threes on the night by the Bears. And that ties the Farrell Center record. 18 made threes by the Bears. Farrell Center record for Baylor made threes. Baylor sitting at 104 with under a minute to play. Nice jumper left side by Reginald Reynolds. He's got 14 this evening. Leading score for the Delta Devils. 14 for Reynolds. Oh. 15 by Brown. There's the record breaker. 19 made threes by the Bears. A Baylor record for made threes here in the Farrell Center. You know, it's funny because we, we did a game earlier this year, J-Mo, where it was the first time in a long time where they didn't hit any threes. Exactly. And then tonight they broke the record. He checked. Oh, man. Here a little. Feeling it. Shot just off. 
Little back defensively, he fouls. Cameron Mahan. Here's the record breaker. I love it. I love the confidence right there by Merrill Little. The three shots in a row. Merrill Little showing us, he's just giving us a, a sneak peek of what he's capable of. Almost had uh, had three in a row. Yeah. Just missed on that last three. Maybe got fouled and the refs didn't want to call it because they wanted to get out of here. <laughs> Try to understand. Mahan at the line. Forty-eight points for Mississippi Valley State, right on their season average. They average forty-eight point eight points per game. Second free throw, no good. Miro Little the rebound. Eighteen seconds to go. Bears don't have to shoot again. And it looks like they won't. Miro Little will dribble out the final seconds in this game. It is a memorable finale from Baylor men's basketball here in the Farrell Center. Crowd stands and applauds. The Bears win it 107 to 48 over Mississippi Valley State. Put it in the record books. Miro.